Doing a PhD can be a great decision in some specific cases, but for most people I know, getting their PhD arguably hurt their careers. I've spent a very long time in academia, ranging from very unknown schools all the way up to MIT and Harvard. And I've seen so many people start their PhDs for various reasons, and I've also seen where they ended up after their PhDs. In this video, I'm going to break down exactly why and when you either should or shouldn't do a PhD. I'm also going to give some personal examples of mistakes that I've made that I wish I could tell past myself. I don't even want to get into this whole discussion about PhDs having to work crazy hours for minimum wage, anxiety, depression, stress, and all that stuff. I think we are all aware that PhDs are like this. However, if you're very ambitious and you want to shoot for the stars, I don't think that a few years of discomfort and low salary should get into your way. Instead, you should focus on what actually is best for your career. So what does a PhD really mean? You've probably seen this visualization of a big sphere that represents all of human knowledge. And elementary school, you learn kind of the basics in the middle, and high school is a bit more. And then during your bachelor's and master's degree, you slowly start specializing into one direction, until eventually with your PhD, you reach the peak or the edge of human knowledge. Doing a PhD really means you become a researcher, researching some extremely niche topic you're going to become the world's greatest leading expert in quantum effects and high energy ray propagation through intergalactic magnetic fields. And you know who actually cares about you being the world's leading experts in quantum effects and high energy ray propagation to intergalactic cosmic fields? Nobody! You'll spend five to seven years of your life becoming the world's leading expert in something that nobody really cares about. I challenge you now, go on LinkedIn, exactly zero job openings in quantum effects and high energy whatever it is I said earlier. The point I'm getting at here is not that you will be unemployed after your PhD. I'm sure you're going to find a job. The point I'm getting though is that unless you become a university professor, you'll have to get a new job in at least a slightly, if not significantly different field, which means you will have to re-educate yourself. However, most companies just don't have the patience for you to learn the new skills, especially not during an economic down cycle such as right now. Why, you might be asking yourself? Well, let's take my startup as an example. A while ago, I was interviewing candidates for a new machine learning engineering position. And I received applications from brilliant PhDs, you know, people who specialize in all sorts of quantum intergalactic stuff or, you know, equivalently niche fields. And I'm sure they were all very smart and I'm sure they could have all learned the new skills to become well machine learning engineers very quickly. However, why would I wait for someone who's overqualified in some specific field to learn these new skills if it could just hire some young person who has three years of work experience out of college, who went straight for machine learning engineering and doesn't need any kind of new re-education. The usual response people would give to this argument that the PhD is really about learning how to think. And once you learn how to think, you can learn any job in no time. You know what? I kind of call bullshit in that argument. I mean, yes, there is something to this. However, by the time you complete your PhD, you're probably gonna be around 30 years old. You don't need 30 years just to learn how to think. That's like training for some sport for 30 years without competing and then eventually going to the competition for the first time well past your physical peak. It doesn't really make sense. Our brain's peak cognitive function is likely either in our late teens or early 20s. After that, we really just become smarter by becoming more experienced and more knowledgeable about things. For example, if I was applying for some quant finance job and competing against 19-year-old me, I'm 29 right now, I wouldn't stand a chance. 19-year-old me was just so much better at figuring out crazy equations and stuff like that. So if your goal is just to learn how to think, I think you would be way better off to just go directly for your career and learn everything in two to three years rather than spending five to seven years doing a PhD. Obviously, there are some exceptions to this, but more about it later. And it gets worse because during your PhD, you might be making backwards progress. It was certainly the case for me and also for some of my colleagues because you know what skills really matter for your career? Your technical skills are obviously relevant, but they alone will only make you become a glorified worker. You need to learn how to develop great social skills, how to negotiate, how to persuade other people, how to get along with coworkers and resolve conflicts. All of these are super important skills which you most likely won't be getting during your PhD. Most PhDs that I know ended up becoming lone wolves, working on their tiny little project with very little collaboration. And also you should keep in mind that university professors are rarely good managers. After all, they're not chosen for their management skills like they would be in a company. Instead, they're chosen for their technical research skills. And even though you might get lucky, in 
probably the majority of cases, university professors won't really be able to help you become a better version of yourself and grow in your role as a person. Another common reason why I see people go into PhDs is because they don't actually understand what a PhD means. A PhD is a job. You work in exchange for money. That's pretty much a definition of a job. And it's not just any job, it's the job of a researcher. And if you're 100% certain that becoming a researcher is really what you want to do in your career, great, you're on the right track. But so many times I hear people say, Oh my God, I'm not yet ready to go into the corporate world. I still want to stay in school and do a PhD. No, please get that idea of staying in school out of your head. A PhD is a career path optimized to make you become a researcher, usually as a university professor. But if you just wanna stay in school after completing your undergraduate degree, just do a one or two year master's degree or maybe get an MBA or something like that. But not a five to seven year long PhD. All right, this was a lot of negative talk about PhDs. As I said earlier, there exist specific scenarios in which it really does make sense for you to do a PhD. But right now I can only think of four different ones. Number one, if you already know that becoming a researcher is your dream career path, then doing a PhD is a very viable option. Most likely, if you want to become a university professor, this will be the most direct path. So, if that's your goal, go for it. I actually made a whole video that you can watch talking about how to apply to all the top PhD programs. As a matter of fact, back in the days, it was my personal biggest dream to become a university professor. And that's also the reason why I applied to a PhD in the first place. I was kind of foolish back then. The big caveat here is that becoming a university professor is ridiculously difficult and people tend to overestimate themselves. As a matter of fact, some of my genius colleagues here at MIT and Harvard never made it. And frankly speaking, your odds of becoming a university professor become staggeringly lower if you're not doing your PhD at some top tier university. I know it's unfair, but that's just how it is. You would be surprised about the amount of elitism that goes into professorship applications. Before MIT and Harvard, I studied at EPFL in Switzerland. And if you look at their internal directory, you're going to notice that the fraction of professors, new professors, who went to MIT, Harvard, Stanford, Caltech, and Berkeley, or other top US universities, is huge. And even though EPFL is a great university, usually ranking in the top 10 to 30 in the world, the fraction of my friends who did their PhDs at EPFL became professors after that at a decent school is staggeringly low. And almost all of them ended up doing some random engineering jobs later. Don't get me wrong, they're making decent money and having a good life, but it's just not their dream. And if they had directly gone for these jobs before they did a PhD or maybe just after some master's degree, arguably they would be making more money right now. Number two. Another good reason to do a PhD at a top US university is because you can earn a free master's degree. It's true. After two and a half years of doing my PhD at MIT, I dropped out and I received a free master's degree. Wasn't planning on it initially, but it actually worked out good for me. And on top of that, I got paid $50,000 per year. It's a great deal. And at the same time, my friends who were just doing regular master's degrees at the same university, they had to pay $50,000 per year. It's a win. So what's the catch? Well, there isn't really any. I mean, you may have to do some research on the side while taking your courses, but that shouldn't be too bad. However, admission rates for paid PhD programs are often by an order of magnitude lower than for just regular master's degrees. Allegedly, my PhD program at MIT in computer science has an admission rate of around 1%, while master's degrees at Harvard universities in computer science were about 10 to 20 percent allegedly. The third reason why many foreign nationals apply for PhD programs in the U.S. is because it's a great door opener to first of all move to the U.S. and also become a permanent resident. As a matter of fact I know quite a bunch of people at even MIT and Harvard who are really just doing the PhD for that reason and you know what? Fair. Now the fourth reason might be that some traditional industries or specific positions might just want to see you have a doctor prefix to your name. Now this kind of sounds like a silly thing, but it is actually true that in some specific industries this could be an advantage. For example, if you want to become the chief science officer of a pharmaceutical company, they might want to see you have a PhD. However, that's a very weak reason and you should really do a good research to determine if that is actually worth the five to seven years of doing a PhD. The big question now is why are so many people still doing their PhDs even though it may not really make sense given their situation? I think I have a theory. And by the way, this is just an assumption. I think the reason is because of inertia. You see, education is a bit like a train. 
you hop on in, in elementary school, and then train goes choo choo choo, middle school, high school, college, and then you know eventually the logical next station is well a PhD. Stopping after your bachelor's or master's degree means you need to fight that inertia. It means you need to hop off the train, go to a completely different station in a different direction. That's just something that people find scary. It means you have to go out of your comfort zone. As a final word of advice, if you have a very strong reason to do a PhD and you're absolutely certain about it, go for it. But if you're unsure, you should never make the PhD to be the default option to go to. Instead, you can just go to industry. And if you're not happy there after some time, you can always go back to academia. The best PhD candidates that I've met at MIT were actually two individuals who've worked in industry for two or three years, decided they don't like it, then came back to get their PhD. And they're currently on track to not just being great PhD candidates, but actually having a great career afterwards as a result. As a little disclaimer, I should encourage you to really watch other videos on the same topic, so I'm not overly biasing you with my personal opinion. After all, my personal opinion is definitely also shaped by my personal experience. If you want to further educate yourself, a great place to start learning real practical skills is Brilliant.org who kindly agreed to sponsor this video. Brilliant is a great platform for learning by doing. With thousands of interactive lessons online in math, data science, informatics, AI, and others. One area I keep recommending everyone to become good at is intuitively understanding probabilities. A great place to learn about this is with Brilliant's course called Introduction to Probabilities. When you open up the course, we can go directly to conditional probabilities. And over here, you can see a very interesting example. So the home team has a 45% chance of winning going into any English Premier League match. Now you have all the data here, and the question is, what do you think the chance is if the away team is leading in halftime? Is it still 45%? This is it more or less than 45%? Now, obviously the answer is less. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free of charge for 30 days, just go to brilliant.org slash Samuel Bosch or click on the link down in the description. You'll also get a 20% off their annual premium subscription. I hope this video helped you by shedding a different light on your prospect of potentially doing a PhD. You can let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Also, if you learned something new, you can always thank me by giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. With that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.